This is Rapidity Lite, our free IDE for developing high reliability embedded systems. Specifically, this is the welcome page, the first thing you'll see when you start Rapidity for the first time. Here you can see help information such as the Getting Started Guide, as well as our Introduction to Embedded C, which is a course that uses Rapidity Lite for many of its exercises. We also have access to three training videos, including the video you're watching now on Rapidity's basics, a future video on debugging using Rapidity, and finally a video showing off some of Rapidity's advanced timing analysis features. If you need to close the welcome page, you can do so by pressing the X. The welcome page can be reached at any time from the help menu. Let's create our first project. This can be done through the toolbar by selecting Rapidity Project or from the file menu. Rapidity Lite includes a number of project types, including a basic project for both ADA or C, which includes a simple scheduler and a flashing LED task, and more advanced projects that show off some of the features of our TTE32 processor. This has been designed for high reliability applications and has an emphasis on extremely predictable timing. For now, let's create a simple example project in C. Simply pressing finish results in the project being generated. What you can see here is the main rapidity perspective, selected by the buttons at the top right of the toolbar. A perspective is essentially a collection of views for a specific purpose. In this case, we have our problems view, which will show any compiler errors or warnings that may occur. We have our project explorer view, which shows all of our projects, including the one we just created, and the files that they contain. And we have an outline view, which will show the contents of any source files that we may open. If we have limited space available, we can maximize a particular view by double clicking on its tab, or by clicking on the maximize button. This allows us to see the entire view at once. When one view is maximized, the other views are still available by clicking on their icons. This will remain popped up until the original view is clicked on again. This particular view is showing the project settings editor. This can be found for any given project in the Project Explorer. Here we have icons for the current tool chain, manufacturer and device settings, showing that we're using the TT32 processor, as well as settings such as our oscillator frequency and some summary of our device information. Next we have our scheduler settings. This includes our user and interrupt stack sizes, which we can change here, our scheduler tick period, as well as some options that configure how the scheduler behaves. We can also use this page to clean and rebuild the project, upload to some hardware, start debugging, or run the program in a simulator. Finally, we can use our timing statistics functionality, which we'll get to in the third screencast of the series. Clicking on any of the option links will take us directly to the source code and the appropriate option within. We can make any changes to these options within here and after saving see it reflected in the configuration page. Let's rebuild the project. As you can see the compiler is now working and the build is complete. At the bottom right of the screen, we can now see our code and data meters, which show us exactly how much of the code and data memory our program is using. This is correct as of the last compile. Now suppose we want to look at the tasks in the system. To do this, we can simply click on the tasks tab at the bottom of the screen. The table on this page shows us the name, priority, offset, period, worst case execution time estimate, 
deadline estimate and jitter estimate for all of the tasks in our system. Remember that these tasks, just as with the configuration options, come directly from our source code. At any time, I can simply double-click on one of these options and it will take us to the configuration file where the tasks are specified. Here we can see that all the tasks are stored in a static array, specifying the function, the period, the delay, and our estimate of the worst-case execution time. In addition, we can specify a recovery task that may take over from the existing task if it exceeds its worst-case estimate. This feature is only available with our in-chip hardware scheduling facility. You might notice here that our period and delay parameters are specified in ticks. Remember the scheduler tick period setting from the project settings page? This is a multiple of that value. On the other hand, our worst case execution time estimate is measured in cycles. We can return to the previous page we were using with the back button. This takes us straight back to the task page. Of the parameters we saw in the configuration file, only the first five are presented in this table. The final two, deadline and jitter estimate, can be edited directly here, simply by double clicking and entering any value we wish. These are used in conjunction with our timing analysis functionality to determine if the deadline, jitter or worst case execution time estimates have been exceeded. We'll look at this in more detail in the third screencast in this series. Notice that on the tasks page all the timings are specified in microseconds. We can change this from the combo box on the top right. We can select cycles and have all of our timings specified in cycles, or we can select ticks. As you can see, even the settings that you alter yourself will update correctly. Finally, we have the ability to do some static analysis, which can be seen from the analytics tab at the bottom of the screen. Here we can see a summary of our overall memory utilization, including code and data sections, and the linker sections that are taking up most of their space, as well as the top functions taking up the most code size, the largest variables, and the highest stack requirement of any function. Finally, at the bottom, we can see a breakdown of all of this information by symbol. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at some basic debugging. And in the final video of the series, we'll be looking at Rapidity's unique timing analysis functionality. Thank you for listening.